number one. Like I say, best of three action here. Quarterfinals of the ESL Open Cup Korea number 217. 216. Got one ahead of myself. Last week was 216. Okay, well, clearly it wasn't. As in the top right, our red Terran from the Shopify Rebellion is going to be Byun. And the bottom left, our blue Zerg is going to be Solar. Game number one of the best of three. Let's begin with an Overlord. Heading out in a couple different directions. We get started up, we get underway. And it is already Barracks on the low ground from Bjorn. No surprises there. We have ourselves. It's opening map. Solaris. Up too large. Those acceleration zones make it kind of fun. It's a cool map, you know. When this first came out, I really liked it a lot for Terrans. Zergs don't seem to mind it too much nowadays, though, either. Don't know. As you see, both racks going to get set. And we will get ready to move out onto the map yeah, very, very shortly. There's a hatch gas ghoul coming up. The Rex number two is about to be finishing up. Get that underway. Overlord in the center. Just going to turn a little bit. Again, a couple of Reapers on the way up with the Orbital Command on the way. So we will just see. And these Reapers are going to be our kind of initial kind of talking point here. They're going to be what we really see if Bion can kind of leverage some advantage with or not. So we'll get those all start next couple of moments. Get this set up. As again, those Queens and Lings continuing through and uh, Reapers continue in production as well. And the SEV can drop a command center down on the natural. So just get that in place immediately. There's Reaper coming across the other side. Going to start firing up. A couple of drones going to get blasted about. A couple of Lings taking damage as well. We go back and forth here. Those few lings still coming through. The Reaper's still taking some shots. Yo, holy goodness. Kuro Misago, 41 on the 50 gifted subs. Bro, thank you a lot as uh, these Reapers will continue to fight. That was absolutely out of nowhere. Thank you so much for the uh, generosity to a uh, uh, huge level. It's very rare we see a 50 bomb. So thank you very much indeed. Going out to a whole bunch of different people. We'll talk about... Maybe all the names a bit later, because obviously these Reapers are going to mean that action is starting nigh on immediately in this game. And even if it's just a couple links going down right now, got to keep track of those Reapers and see where they might uh, move through to. Speed is still continuing up. Couple Ling's about to finish. A few more drones on the way. We do have our queen starting up on the side of Solar, so we get that queen on the way up. A few more drones popping through. We just have ourselves. These Reapers are starting to back it up a little bit. I'm going to get my uh, Stream Elements dashboard open so I can do the shoutouts for all of our gifty subs uh, between the games as well. So thank you so much again, Kurama Sago, for the 50 gifted. Obviously, your two-minute stream delay as well, so it took a little while to say thank you, but I really do appreciate it. Thank you so freaking much. As our Reapers do return all the way back, we do have our command center, third base in the main base coming up as well. As stint back start, the Reapers and the Hellions will begin to move on out into the center of the map, so moving out to the middle here, and obviously with more and more Hellions. I'm just going to be seeing two more factories. Beyond has been playing mech a lot more lately. Apparently, I, so I, I raided Lambo the other day after we casted Beyond Raynor, where Beyond played mech on uh, hard lead against Raynor in the OSC King of the Hill. And uh, Lambo was uh, saying that he told uh, Beyond at the Shopify bootcamp that mech is pretty good. And then uh, a couple of fun comments about it as well. But uh, maybe that really inspired something he has. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's just the fake stim. I was, I was like, he's building stim pack, he's making it. I was about to call up ZG. I was like, CG, someone's doing it. But no, it's actually just 
It's just fake because as this so what comes in the front. <laughs> Bjorn gets figured out, factory goes to the reactor, barracks moves away. I mean at this point you cancel stim of course. And uh, we are gonna have ourselves this next stage setting up. A few cyclones coming through as we do have our Hellions continue to gather together. Road drone, uh, extra drones, all popping out. But yeah, five cyclones at a time, and this is where the pressure builds up. Solo getting the scout is big because he can get the Rotron and Lair on the way up, so those will be some pretty big factors. Aliens coming around again. Armory is on the way. Extractor's coming by. A couple of creep timbers coming through. We've got ourselves a few more roaches on the way out as well as Bjorn back into the uh, well, kind of center of the map, moving back over here now. Third CC on location, and again with those cyclones coming through so many at a time, it's crazy how many cyclones you can crank out. You need to be able to be on top of this as Sola, otherwise this can get away from you extremely quickly. So something to 100% watch out for. As we see our Hellions, our Reapers, our Cyclones moving upwards. Here go a couple of Creep Jimmers being knocked down pretty much straight away. And obviously have our Cyclones looking to... I mean, surprised they don't lock on as they retreat here. I mean, I guess just eager to get away, dealing with a few Lings across the other side of the map. So Cyclones over there causing a couple of problems. As we do see, SCVs continue to move about as well. Cyclones continue to come through. The Lings get chased away. More oh, Hellion Cyclone of Bion. Back to the top as we see these cyclones going to lock on. That overseer will go down as well. It's a nice pick off. Again, just knocking down that overseer is a pretty big deal as you see a couple of creep teamers going down now. Queens are going to start getting blasted as well. Roaches starting to move forwards. The rest of these cyclones coming back across. We are going to go for more of this creep spread. Roaches and roach speed continuing in the infestation pit. Coming up here from Solar as well. Getting that going on that third base. Two more factories on the way up. Additional SCVs on the way. Roaches and the Roach Speed all building. Again, a lot of that coming through for the moment as we rally out towards this ramp. Cyclones, Hellions beginning to make their way into the center here. And we'll have a little bit of a scan coming through. The Cyclones will lock and kill an Overlord. Obviously, Solar still playing very Roach heavy. When Solar played against Mech in the past, he used to love a lot of the very aggressive Roach stars where you hit three base economy and you just send it. And you basically try and break the Terran down before they're really, you know, properly set up. Not sure if that's necessarily something we'll be able to find this time around as a couple of Cyclones lock on again. Broach is taking some damage. The shots continue through and again, some investors now being added on in amongst this as well as we do lift up that depot. Cyclones will chase those Roaches away. More Roaches coming around that left-hand side. Another Marine being picked off. And again, just having ourselves the Hive and a couple of Eva Chambers all coming through. The Burrow starts from Solar on that natural. Getting that set up as well. Still, again, just seeing the rest of these Cyclones moving out to the front. Tanks are all sieged. It's going to be tough for Solar to really find a breaking point through. We are going to have the Hive, so obviously Vipers become very important. They are going to provide a lot of the efficiency that really allows you to trade against some of this mech army. Blinding Clouds, even Abducts on Cyclones can be very good initially. Guarantee yourself kills is actually a pretty big deal. So, yeah, being able to kind of get in there with the uh, the Vipers in a lot of different ways can do an absolute crap ton for you. Uh, so definitely watching out for that as the Cyclones begin to back it up a little bit. Roach Ravager continues to come through. Those Ravagers going to aim for those Cyclones. Roach is coming from the other side. It's a wraparound. Cuddle time here. Unfortunately, Bjorn did not consent to these Cuddles, but that's how the Zerg plays. As he gets rid of so many of those Cyclones, Bjorn getting absolutely caught. Great positioning from Solar. And he is going to benefit from that as, well, Bjorn, probably going to have to go into the much more defensive side of this now. But that's going to be tough. If Sola has so much stuff to try and push through with. And he's continuing to tech in as well. You know, Spire coming online. The extra Vipers coming out. And there's a couple extra Vipers still on the way through. With the Bane speed Speed's starting up on that Bane Nest as well. Roach Ravage is still coming back through the center. And one more time. We just have ourselves the vibe. They're going to go and consume up a little bit of energy. I think it's going to run through. Cyclones will be there. A lot of Ling's already going down. Missile turret taking some shots. Roach Ravager pressing forwards. Again, tanks and Cyclones will try and hold. But the first few tanks are a little bit clumped up. Means that Curse of Bowels are more easily found. As well, I just don't see there being enough tanks, right? There's no way to hold off this army from advancing forwards. 
There's only a couple tanks left. Gun's gonna give it up before we get all the way there. And it is GG. Sola is gonna take game number one on game number two. Bottom left, getting himself into a bit of a sandwich. His mech was the filling. It is Bjorn, now a red Terran from the Shopify Rebellion in the bottom left hand side. Top right it is going to be our blue Zerg. Repping Team Vitality, of course. We have ourselves Solar. Mech was pretty short lived game one. I'll sign any big map for game two. Mech again, question marks. I'm kind of surprised. Especially when it doesn't work in game one, unless there's a specific reason Beyond's trying it out this week. You know, maybe wants to get better at it, wants to get some more experience with it. Oh, so GSL is coming up, guys. GSL beginning this Thursday, even. Uh, so GSL is on the way. Uh, just Bjorn playing. First group. I don't remember. No. I was going to say, I think uh, Bjorn plays in yeah, Group C. So Bjorn plays in a, a couple of weeks still. Uh, Maru, Sue, Shin, and DRG in uh, GSL this Thursday. Now we're with all the Zergs. Couple of queens, couple of links all coming down. Our orbital and our Reaper coming through. And Overlord heading towards the natural. Just chilling here then, again a couple orbitals on the way, the Reaper is coming about, Queens and the Drones all coming through as well. Just gonna see a Queen popping up on the natural and a couple of those Lings really do head around that far left hand side, so they're looking to try and see a bit of what they can get up to as well, just for the moment. Gonna see ourselves the couple lings trying to break through. Reaper and the SCVs combined will speed up the process, but the lings did get in for the scouts. So they see the three racks, three CC. Well, yeah, so I was gonna say, Bjorn's not gonna be chuffed about his opponent seeing pretty much everything that's going on. So there you go. He will have a little bit of in game chitter chatter. With one another. Bjorn's like, come on, bro. Yeah, and Sola's like, yeah, you know, scouting all the time. Bjorn's like, bro, I'm playing this series as though you're not going to scout. And uh, meanwhile, Sola just scouts and sees everything and, and begin preparing nicely in time. As Reaper comes back over, Marines, Stimpak, SCVs, Factory, but everything on the way up. Again, our queens will be there. The Reaper gets chased away. Again, our SCVs pretty decent at home with the uh, barracks. Currently just setting up the add-ons. Factory, then double engineering bay as well. I see a distinct lack of units being made right now. I guess those uh, barracks are just... Well, I mean, two of these barracks are just sat here, not building any marines. What are we doing? We've now got 500 minerals. We got on a reactor, another barracks. Are we going to start building units? Another barracks again? Purely just building SCVs. He's like, he's literally cutting units right now. To get what? Just more production? More SCVs available? Like, that's crazy talk. <laughs> what a wild thing to be going into. Finally, Marines start up again. What a huge timing of marines just to cut back on 
Again, Solo said you're greedy as hell. Yeah, absolutely he's greedy as hell. He has been as greedy as possible. That is crazy to cut units for that long and you've got the barracks there ready to produce. Just wanted to speed up the process of all those extra barracks coming online and everything. That's crazy. Marines get forward, a link gets picked off. We do see in the Medivax 1 1 upgrades, the armory. The future of Bjorn is still being very much so established here. There's a couple of SCVs transfer over towards the third base. And 1 1 coming up. Back armor. Combat shield, bit of everything coming through. I mean, it's going to be there. I'm going to grab that Overlord, and as we take that out, we to see those Marines going to start to move forward again. So up the left-hand side we go. So up to the top. A little bit of a journey. The Medivacs will be getting to unload. Actually, you have a couple of these Lings already running forward. The Marines will be there, taking away a lot of those Lings. The Overlord will go down. Actually, will get picked up. The drone gets taken out as well. Gonna turn it back around. We do have a queen already in a bit of trouble, so that queen goes down. And a couple of creep tumors will get picked up and uh, placed also. As you see, the 1 1 melee upgrades coming up. The bane speed is building as well. The rest of those things coming back around into the center. A couple of medivacs top left, gonna pull back. Marines in the tank into the middle here. Ling's gonna get a wrap around Bjorn just out in the open. Uh, donation of units, quite frankly, is. I think it's not a donation. A lot of lings do start to go down, but you lose a chunk of marines in a tank. That's not what you want to have as the momentum-based, you know, Terran player in a game. Absolutely not. Doesn't get any banelings here either. No target firing before he has to just lift up and get the hell out. This does not feel like a pretty situation at all for Bjorn as we stim on through. Tank is going to get some fifth tumors as well. On the top one, medevac goes down. The other medevac full of units still escaping away. Marines, Medivacs all joining together. Other couple of queens coming back across. Ling Bane is still coming through as well. We got the infestation pit building up on the side of Solas. Bring that infestation pit into play. Again, T2 melee upgrades coming about. More Ling Bane, Queen, a bit of everything continuing to come through. We've just got ourselves. The group of Marines on that right hand side are going to come diving across. A couple of Ling's already going down. The Queen will take some damage. We got our Marines to pull back into this position. The Ling Bane's still coming across. We'll lift up a few more of those Marines. Head toward the main base and into the main we head. Again, the rest of the Marines and tank. Continue to chill out. A few more Zerglings going down also. Let's come over. Again, the Medivac's going to turn back down that right-hand side onto that uh, 3 o'clock. Oh, the Medivac gets picked away. The other Marines begin to battle. Really going to be able to do enough. Sola has so much money to spend, he's just waiting to get up to Hive. As long as Bjorn isn't really progressing more than just a couple of these drops here and there, I think Sola is very okay with this situation. Like, I think Sola really looks at this and says, yeah, this is a very variable playable setup for me. Marines continue through. It's going to be an overlord. They start to grab there as well. We've got a couple more group tumors on the go. And 2 2 on the way out. CC moves over that far left hand side. Medivac pulling back to the middle. Gonna join up with the Marines and Siege tanks here as well. Plus three armor, man. Plus three attack. Both starting up from Bjorn. Got a few more Marines out over that far right hand side. The Ling is gonna come over and a couple of SCVs begin to drop as well. The Ling Bane all join together. CC will land once again. Fourth base trying to be built up here. Bjorn knows a lot of Ling Bane here. Run in. Do we talk about any banes? Just gonna take whatever we can get while sort of stepping. But actually, Solo's the one to back it up. Doesn't want to take that inefficiency trade. Uh, so here we go. Round two. This time, Solo does decide to come in, realizing he's got enough. Uh, scared to kind of go further forward. There's one tank on this high ground. We're gonna lift the base. SCVs are sacrificed, however, and that means a bunch of SCVs drop at the same time. Bjorn finds a drop on the right side to get rid of 12 drones himself. 
Yeah, that's such a nice drop in return, so equal work is lost across the board. Solo with the 3 3 Adrenal Glands Ultra Cavern. Now he's found a way to spend that money. He will start to really spend it. This tank has been a champion. Up on this high ground, 23 kills. Tank has been an absolute hero thus far. What an absolute king of this game as the Marines will come back across. Drop off into this mineral line where we will have, well, a few drones. Obviously, going to have to evacuate. The position is very good. The drones start to go down very quickly. We just about lived up. One of the bains connected. We have a few lower HP Marines that can maybe unload or do something. Going to push at the same time. Cancel the gold momentum. Feels like it's in Beyond's favor, but do you feel like the Ultras on the way out are going to be a real momentum killer? This base is going to go down as well, however. Still on the way across, and oh, Beyond doesn't really have an evacuation plan. Only one medevac. Four Marauders get out. Everything else just has to try and stand its ground. I mean, Beyond reset Solo down to four bases. Fifth just finishing now. Top left side, and obviously rebuild this right side to try and get to six. Like I say, for Sola, the units on the way are really going to be the game changers. Having these Ultras, these kind of tankier forces that can be in the front, they can make the difference here, perhaps. As those few Marauders do lift up, the Ling Bane Ultra moving about. A couple of tanks starting to take some shots. But don't mind spreading about as well as you are going to see the Ling Bane Ultra Continue to come through. More of these Marauders on the right side going to try and catch that hatchery. And we'll indeed take that out. Four Marauders just load back up. Hatchery goes back down onto the fifth. Uh, so, well, I guess, I guess it was the fifth originally. Now it's going to be kind of the sixth. As that top side base is still active. Top left, 11 o'clock, which is now where Bjorn is going to turn his attention towards. Hey, Airy Twitch, thank you so much for the half year resub as well. Six in a row, thank you very much. As our bio stims it up, and we are going to make our way into, like I say, this 11 o'clock location. Lings are going to try and float on forward, going to try and catch a little bit of this bio as well. Medivacs are like, now, oh, let's get out of here. We try and evacuate away, going to go towards this uh, upside corner. A bit more bio still stimming through. Queen in some trouble. A couple of creep tumors will be in some trouble as well. Lift up once more, we're going elsewhere. The hatchery gets cancelled. More of these lings taking damage. Widowmine shot goes off towards this. Marauders getting hit by the bailings. We do load up. We're going to hit uh, Parasite Bomb as we head into the main base. There's nothing here. We could just fully unload in the main. We've got to start, otherwise, the Parasite Bomb will kill. Well, Medivac goes down, maybe. I mean, like I said, I think it's worth trying to unload. Even if you just get a little bit out of this. As these Medivacs are low still, by the way. They will get away, so fortunately for them, they get out. Queen showing up. I mean, there's not really a lot of longevity left on this drop. Even the value units inside these medivacs are low HP. Oh, we get away. I mean, hey, get home, heal up, repair. It's value to be had. Gun is still dropping on the top left-hand side again. The activity is through the roof in this game. As we go after a few more drones, the Marines will lift back into medivacs. We escape away once again. And again, kind of throughout this entire game, just chaos is ensuing. As Medivac Marauder Liberator continues in, the couple of investors will spread over here as well. Those lurking investors waiting for opportunities to strike when the timing is worse. When Ultras are on their way forward, you land that fungal growth and you can make your opponent's life an absolute misery. Two meds, two libs. Ghost coming up as well. We do see the rest of those CCs all building through. Marines will sit in the corner here. We do have the Ultra continue in as well. Marines trying to get away. Just going to load back into that medevac. Into the main base. We're going to unload a few of these units where we're going to grab ourselves a circling already as well. And the Overseer just going to get chased out of there. Parasite Bomb is going to go down. And that's those couple of medevacs being picked away. I just see more of these drones. Being picked off, we dive deeper into this upper right-hand side. 15 workers being killed. Oh, and she gets a scan here for the Infested 2. You know, right now, this is all talk from Bion, though. You know, doing these drops and moving around. He's got to walk the walk, which is taking the bigger fights. So when is he going to be able to do that? When is he going to show? Well, it may be on Solo's kind of, you know, kind of precipice of him taking the fight. Burn has to show us that he can deliver in these fights, though, but he does have a lot of lips. He's got a lot of ghosts. He's built this army up nicely behind all the pressure we've seen so far. So he really has, you know, with the drops, busied himself, busied his opponent, and then he's built up into this excellent army for the latest stages of the game. And now all you see in production, mines, lips, ghosts. We don't need those basic bio units no more. 
You know, we are just going to be all about the tech here. As this Liberator got by, uh, a couple of locations it can siege, including the gold. Even if the Queen's cleaned up, a couple drones will likely go down still. Two, three. So yeah, damage done here. Solo does dive bottom left, and there's no defense here. 29 SCVs on this location. Oh, that's an SCV massacre, although Bjorn is going to push top left side and find himself a good few drones in return. A lot of those drones are actually going to slip away. So Bjorn is the one with the bigger losses there. The couple of libs getting some shots off as this army tries to retreat away from Solo, tries to go elsewhere. He will go after the hatchery, take that out. Pick off the drone as well. It's coming over. Ultras as well. Medivacs load back up. Eight drones dropping. Now the rest of this Lingbane Ultra comes back down through to the center. So into the middle we go. Viper going to be overhead. Again, a couple more ghost marauders and mines coming through also. Let's see a little bit of that bio pushing forward and again chasing those lings away for the moment. Corruptors on the way out on uh, later stages. Begin to establish as Bjorn replaces this base down over here. Yo, Scripto, thank you so much for the 12 month one year research. We've had a lot of kind of big one, you know, you know, actual like round year resubs this uh, last couple of days. Hell yeah, thank you so much guys, appreciate it. Thank you for the continued support. Let's just keep on doing the Starcraft and well, more missile turrets, ghosts on the way out. We do have ourselves a bunch more missile turrets on the left side getting set up. The ghosts coming through as well. You see how Sion, he does typically play itself into a long game. So we stand again right now as he's going to knock down this set of rocks. Ling, Ultra, Corrupt, the Viper, and everything joining together. Upside, our Bioforce coming through as well. Going to knock a hatchery down already. Uh, let's see the Wooden Mine shot going off. Going to drive ourselves a Corruptor as well. There's in the rest of this Ling Ultra kind of gathering up. Going to go and join. Forward that set of rocks. Force this base to lift up. Bains are going to crash in, a couple of marines going down. Our drones will continue to transfer across the medivac still here. And Ghost will be there to again chase those Lings away. Ling, Bane, Ultra Corruptor. Back into the center. Widow Mines getting burrowed, Bio still coming through. A couple of those changelings dropping down will try and make a little bit of an advanced forward. It's going to go one, going to go two. Grab both of those already. This of our Ling is going to go back over that left hand side, open up this set of rocks. Bottom right corner, we got a hatchery going down. CC's already been placed on the 6 o'clock as well. Ling Ultra Bane just knocking that open as the Bioforce comes through. A couple ghosts try and uh, set up as well. A couple of snipes. What am I? She hits the Corrupted here. Here we go, Solar. As the oldest from the top side, Bjorn gets rid of those quickly, so he has the easier kind of escape on the flank, uh, away from the flank. And Solo has so much money to rebuild with, and he'll start to do with 60 lings and a couple more ultras. But he does lose a lot, right? I mean, he got a couple of initial connections, but that's about it. The snipes there do not reach as the ultra is able to run out of range. Run out of reach. Nicely done. Do you kill this base, mind you? Top left base looks very safe, despite not being a planetary. Uh, Bjorn just, I mean, 47 workers ain't cutting it, right? He is going to struggle to rebuild what he needs. That said, he does have more army supply availability. He can have a larger army at any single point in time, so that goes a long way too. Can definitely be a big advantage. Things come back over, but I'm just going to get there. A couple more things going down. Extra Balin's just going to be morphing in. We get back to the center of the map. Ling, Bane, Ultra, Corruptor. Bit of everything joining together for the moment. Heading back down the bottom once again. And we're going to look for a couple of Lings that move through. You're going to see both those get knocked down immediately. Again, the Libs coming about. 
And these ghosts are back in the way, the bio army as well. A couple of extractors also in production as we just see the Banes continue to come around here as the Widow Mine is going to set off onto a couple of different lings. Bolt just coming through, now going to aim for the SCV line. The Banes are going to come rolling up. Can Bjorn find the defense? 30 army supply more. And of course, he is the defender, right? So being the defender has its advantage as well. Again, it's a lot of lings, the ultra, advanced ballistics. That'll be finished up to help those liberators out. It's a decent fungal. Did you stop and get some snipes off though? The first couple of ultras are going down. And that is gonna be enough for the moment. As the rest of that Ling Bane Ultra continues about. It's gonna be seeing the Caduceus reactor on the way in as well. Extra libs coming up, the widow mines coming in. Ling Bane continues through, gonna try and get onto the rest of those marauders. Ultra still grabbing a few more of the ghosts as well. Widowmine's going off all over the place. Is Bjorn making a hold out of this? It's it, it's an interesting scenario because Bjorn's supply is still decent, but a lot of his supply is also in medevac, so a lot of the supply in, in the numbers is, is not necessarily really that useful. A bit of bio from the top side starts to show up to help. And there is the depots. Have you seen a ghost fire and corruptors getting chased away? Playing Ultra. Heading back down that bottom right side. Olive is going to go back across once again. But of mine's firing. Fungal growth was huge. Lands on a lot of units. The Ling's able to get a wrap around because of it. Now the Crimson continues to chase forward. Liberators will be going down. Bane's continuing through a lot of SCVs dropping. We are going to keep on chasing those libs. Are being hunted on down. We're going to get ourselves a couple of uh, liberation zones set up as well. As we will take out a few more units. GG says Bjorn and it is going to be solid to take game two of the best of three. Oh, game one convincing. Game two. But there in the end, I feel like Bjorn did a good job 